A recent discovery under the Russian sea has stunned the world. It can only be described as the wreckage of a crashed spaceship. Recently, a huge secret about unknown creatures and aliens was uncovered in the depths of the Baltic Sea, promising to change everything archaeologists and even historians know about our world. While a research team was collecting some artifacts in the sea, they encountered very strange things. What they saw might be the remains of an underwater civilization. Stay with us to find out what the researchers discovered. The wreckage of a crashed spaceship. The Baltic Sea is one of the most studied brackish water systems in the world because it has an integrated monitoring system that provides researchers and scientists with data describing the temporal and spatial changes in waters and its drainage basin. It is also very interesting for historians as it served as the economic group of the Hanseatic League, the major medieval trading group of ports in Northern Europe. Due to the strategic location of the sea, there are many strange stories about it and the discoveries beneath it. Strange discoveries that due to their serious impacts on human life were never revealed. One such discovery that has shocked researchers is related to the Baltic Sea. A strange object resembling a large disk fell into the Baltic Sea and was found by a team of explorers known as Ocean X. A complete team of Swedish treasure hunters at Ocean X, who primarily searched for shipwrecks on the seafloor, were astonished by this unprecedented discovery. The design of this mysterious object ignited people's imaginations because this flying disc had crashed and was almost 60 feet long, creating a hole measuring 650 feet in the bed of the Baltic Sea. People were still pondering over the discovery and contemplating whether a real flying saucer had crashed or not until Oceanix provided information. They confirmed that it was indeed a flying saucer object. Professional ocean diver Stefan Hogborn also confirmed this. He said that all electrical equipment, even satellite phones didn't work when we were above the flying saucer, but when we moved away they became operational again. Another alarming and yet eerie discovery about this flying saucer, also known as the Baltic Sea Anomaly, is a striking resemblance to the Millennium Falcon in the Star Wars film series. It seems that this discovered object in the Baltic Sea is made up of angular metallic pieces, further reinforcing claims of a crashed flying disc. Beneath the sea at the discovery site, there are two paths. One led to a large circle and the other was 200 meters away. One of the members of the research team expressed genuine astonishment at the discovery site. They were puzzled by what they had found and were convinced that there must be a natural explanation until it was proven that a real flying saucer had crashed. They decided to investigate further and refrain from making the matter public until the end of the investigation. They reached out to geologists and marine biologists and when they heard from them that they had never seen anything like it, they became even more astonished. It is said that the structure of this found object resembles a staircase leading to a dark hole. With the information obtained, the numerous speculations have arisen. Some speculate that these underwater remains are remnants of anti-submarine defenses from World War II, but in the meantime another phenomenon occurred. The strange event that took place was an image showing something peculiar submerged in the Baltic Sea while white waves surrounded it. This phenomenon was found approximately 30 miles from Stockholm and a photo was published to confirm this. In such a situation, the country's military forces are summoned because the discovered object could have been a remnant of an unknown entity from a war, especially since something else had been discovered in this sea a while ago. The question arose whether the discovered object was a Dutch submarine or one of the mysterious activities of the Allied Services Organization. Over the past hundred years, underwater discoveries have ranged from finding sea monsters and strange marine animals to discovering submarines or objects objects related to aliens. Previously, red eyes of a sea monster were discovered underwater, and now the red lights of an unknown object. There have been numerous sightings of UFOs flying into and out of oceans, indicating that these UFOs have hidden bases underwater. Such sightings have often occurred in the Black Sea, the North Sea, and the coast of Puerto Rico and California. During these incidents, Russia has often been the prime suspect. 
On the other hand, Russia has denied the claims, with even a military spokesperson noting that there is no extraordinary situation, let alone emergency conditions related to Russian warships. Therefore, it could mean that extraordinary events may have occurred in the Baltic Sea region, and this extraordinary phenomenon has been ongoing since a ship from Renaissance era was found untouched in the depths of the sea. This is one of the rare discoveries. The discovered ship dates back to the Renaissance era and belonged to Christopher Columbus, who was exploring new worlds. The ship was well preserved in the cold waters of the Baltic Sea. In 2009, a Swedish associated maritime sonar tracking system first noticed something unusual on its radar. Then, earlier this year, a robotic camera used by a commercial team for natural gas pipelines captured an image of this strange object. An international team of researchers sent a pair of robots underwater to explore the discovered ship. This discovery was so significant that Rod Rigo, the lead marine archaeologist overseeing the research, exclaimed with excitement that he felt like he was standing on the moon in happiness. The research team, consisting of several doctoral students, found the ship untouched. With its timbers and deck intact, a small wooden boat was also present on the ship. Various artifacts were found on the ship, such as an old ship pump and a special masonry stone atop of the walls. Dr. Paco stated that the ship's anchor is also visible, and its presence has helped us understand that the sinking of the ship dates back to the late 15th or 16th century. It appears that the discovered ship is a merchant vessel. Although it had swivel guns, the presence of these guns on the ship indicates tension during that era. Dr. Paco mentioned in an interview that the length of the ship's hull was between 52 to 60 feet. The ship, Santa Maria, was the flagship of Christopher Columbus's voyages, while the other two ships, Nina and Pinta, were about 50 feet long. Records indicate that Santa Maria had a crew of 52, while the other two ships had 18 crew members each. Since the sunken ship was of the same length, it could have been part of Columbus's fleet. Although the name and origin of the lost ship in the Baltic Sea are still unknown, archaeologists named it Cap, which means unknown in Swedish. Scientists deliberately kept the location of this discovery hidden to keep it safe from treasure hunters. Dr. Packham noted that laboratory analysis could accurately determine the age of ancient woods, enabling us to pinpoint the time of the ship's construction. The ability of history to reconstruct and rewrite itself is fascinating and something terrifying. Another historical discovery made in the Baltic Sea was a ship that sank on its maiden voyage. The ship, named Vasa, is nearly 400 years old and was one of the most advanced warships of its time, serving as a source of knowledge for naval archaeologists and historians today. The incidents that befell this ship has endured in history. Despite being one of Sweden's greatest naval achievements and one of the most spectacular warships built at the time, it sank within 20 minutes on its maiden voyage in 1628. The ship survived its first encounter with a severe storm, but succumbed to the next tempest. This disaster did not occur near enemies, in fact the ship sank before the horrified eyes of the people. The Vasa was a grand vessel, adorned with beauty. It was adorned with wooden carvings that told stories of the Swedish royal family, and most importantly, King Gustavo Adolf II. He had ordered the construction of the ship and witnessed its sinking himself. Some believe that the ship's heavy weight was the cause of its capsizing. This incident resulted from the design and construction of the ship by someone who lacked experience in building a fully equipped vessel. Although the Vasa failed Gustavo Adolf II, Second, it has become a treasure for archaeologists. The cold, low oxygen waters of the Baltic Sea protected the Vasa from the bacteria that typically feed on wood. When the ship was raised in 1961, nearly 95% of its untouched wood remained intact, while the feat of preserving wooden structures during the ship's recovery was a great engineering achievement, it was managed properly. Unfortunately, at that time, there was not much space for archaeology. However, now that the ship has been stabilized, the researchers are striving to discover the cause of its sinking. The question remains, why did this ship lack the necessary strength to sail the seas? Scientists discovered that the Vasa was initially designed to carry 36 cannons, but it was sent to sea with 64 cannons. Additionally, the elaborate decorations of the ship contributed to its heaviness and instability. 
Interestingly, another wrecked ship named the Gripsko of Hendon has been found in the same sea. This ship was like a floating fortress, serving as the flagship of the Danish Royal Navy over 500 years ago until it sank in the summer of 1495. According to historical sources, this ship sank with a large number of Danish soldiers and nobles on board, except for the king who was ashore at the time. Ships from this period that have sunk are very rare unless they are quickly covered by sediment after sinking. There is a type of shellfish in salty water that causes the destruction of remains of ships from this period. However, these organisms do not survive in the fresh waters of the Baltic Sea. This has given scientists and historians the opportunity to examine the life of a medieval king who was said to have traveled with abundant royal possessions such as clothing, food, textiles, valuable treasures, weapons, and various tools. These remains provide a unique opportunity to examine an advanced warship from a less understood to a period, a time when a revolution in shipbuilding was reshaping geopolitics and civilization. According to scientists, Grebe's hand it marked the end of the medieval ages and the birth of the modern world. The story of this ship has been preserved in historical accounts in Northern Europe in the 16th century, narrated by eyewitnesses such as a young nobleman who survived this tragedy. The ship was sailing from Copenhagen to the east towards Sweden for a political meeting in the summer of 1495. At that time, Leonardo da Vinci was working on his last supper in Italy, and Nicholas Copernicus had just begun his studies in astronomy in Poland. Dukes and kings were ruling from their castles, and in the wardrobe of every nobleman there could be found a suit of armor. Throughout the Baltic Sea, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark were engaged in an agreement known as the Union, to which they had been committed for nearly 100 years. However, Sweden had withdrawn from this agreement, and this warship was heading towards Sweden for suppression, but unfortunately it never reached its destination and sank very quickly. A report from the 16th century ship recently translated from Latin recounts that the ship's gunpowder storage accidentally caught fire, igniting a blaze that quickly engulfed the vessel. Many of the ship's occupants perished due to smoke and fire, while others threw themselves into the sea, and a wealth of valuable items such as silver and gold coins, precious objects, letters and costly garments went down with the ship. In 2001, during the process of searching for the ship's remains, a diver discovered some peculiar and intriguing empty chests. Scientists discovered that these were used to store cannonballs. Many luxurious and ceremonial items were also found on this ship. In one part of the ship, remnants of some exotic foods and spices were discovered, silver coins alongside an intricately sewn red and black tapestry, spice storehouses, and also some peculiar and exotic substances were found. According to archaeologist Mary Johnson from the Viking Ship Museum in Denmark, these included pepper grains, cloves, and a large amount of saffron. Another unexpected discovery on the ship was multiple panels of intricately decorated tree bark, with some adorned in the shape of peacocks and others in the form of a peculiar creature like a one-horned horse. These artifacts were well preserved, showing traces of gold that still remained on them. It was crucial for the king at that time to have the passenger quarters of the ship decorated lavishly. Additionally, the findings from the remains of the Grievous Hand and Ship indicated its warlike nature. The iron cannonballs discovered on the ship were mostly corroded, and wooden gun carriages designed for transporting guns were also found. These gun carriages, ranging from 9 to 5 feet in length, held rotating guns along both sides of the deck. Archaeologists also found a 13 and a half foot long gun carriage, which was more significant than any previously discovered. Scientists speculated that this gun carriage might have been used for firing behind the ship. One historical source indicates that the Grievous Hand and Ship was armed with 68 guns, which seems to be an accurate figure. This suggests that the ship not only represented a revolution in ship design, but also in naval warfare. In naval battles, enemy ships would typically close in on each other and engage in sword fights, but evidence suggests that the Grievous Hand in was several steps ahead. This advancement allowed ships to engage in long-range combat with each other. During this excavation of this ancient ship, archaeologists found an untouched iron bow that was over 3 feet long. The weapon was so well preserved that the bowstring and all the decorations were still intact. Weapon experts were also excited by the discovery of this ship. Guy Wilson, an expert in early hand weapons, states that examples of steel bows from this period are practically non-existent. Moreover, the new findings appear to be indicative of relatively advanced design. 
Indeed, it seems that the team stumbled upon something they had never expected to find. Long after the excavation, the exploration team also discovered four steel bows and several wooden arrows. These arrows had leather and feathered ends. Among the ship's remains, a dagger was also found, which was used at the time to penetrate enemy armor. Guy Wilson, who was very excited about these discoveries, also mentions another ancient ship called the Mary Rose. He says that it has taken decades to examine the remains of the Mary Mary Rose ship, which sank in 1545. The discovered ship, Grievous Handen, signifies a transition from traditional warfare to battles with more advanced weaponry. Such discoveries from the depths of the Baltic Sea are on the rise and there may be numerous strange artifacts hidden beneath the ocean. What are your thoughts? Feel free to share in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.